Okay, so today we will have a review or short rapid review about the diagnostic approach of lucent bone lesions. Uh, there is a famous mnemonic for the uh, possibilities of uh, lucentary lucent bone lesions, that's fog machines. Fog machines, the F stands for fibrous dysplasia, osteoblastoma, G for giant cell tumor, and metastasis and myeloma. Uh, AI for news my boy sponsors, chondroblastoma, chondromyxoid fibroma, H for hyperparathyroidism and hemangioma, I for infection, N non ossifying fibroma, E for xenophil granuloma and inchondroma, and S for solitary bone cyst. These are the possibilities of a solitary lucent bone lesions. What about multiple lucent bone lesions? What could they be? There is uh, also another mnemonic for them that is FEHMI. Okay? FEHMI includes F, fibrous dysplasia, E for isenophil granuloma and inchondroma, H for hemangioma and hyperparathyroidism, M for multiple myeloma and metastasis, and I for infection. Again, like we said last week, we should have as much information as possible about any patient with multiple or with any bone lesion. This we should be uh, sure the, of the patient's age for the size, the size and the margins of the lesion the matrix and the periosteal reaction. These things that we should make take very good care to see them in every bone lesion. For regarding the age, there is something called Edenkin classification. That is, as you see, it's if the patient is like around one year old, you should suspect neuroblastoma. Up to 10 years old, it's Ewing's tubular, uh, Ewing's sarcoma of the tubular bone. From 10 to 30 years old, it's either osteosarcoma, Ewing's of flat bones. From 30 to 40 years, you'll have the reticular, uh, reticulum cell sarcoma, fibrosarcoma, parosteal osteosarcoma, malignant giant cell tumors, and lymphoma. If it's more than 40 years old, always think of multiple myeloma, metastasis, and chondrosarcoma. Chondrosarcoma in the elderly, more older age group. The site of the region is either epithelial, metaphysial, or the epithelial, as we said. So, what are, regarding the epithelial tumors, what are the possibilities? If it is before epithelial closure, that's in younger age group, think of chondroblastoma, osteomyelitis, osteosarcoma, and Ewing sarcoma. These are the more common bone tumors before epithelial closure. Epithelial tumor before epithelial closure. Uh, after epithelial closure, you'll have giant cell tumor, inchondroma, aneurysmal bone cyst, osteosarcoma, and Ewing sarcoma, okay? Regarding the metaphysial tumors, metaphysis has a very rich blood supply. The growth occurs in the metaphysis, okay? It's the fastest growing area. So all the fog machines can happen there except chondroblastoma because chondroblastoma is cartilaginous forming a tumor. It's a slow growing tumor. It's hypoactive tumor. So all the fog machines except chondroblastoma, okay? Regarding the physical tumor, again, all fog machines except chondroblastoma, giant cell tumor, and aneurysmal bones. Giant cell tumor usually happens uh, at the epiphysis, abutting the uh, articular surface, while aneurysmal bone cyst uh, occur, does not abut the articular surface, okay? What about the size of the lesion? Is it helpful? Size of the lesion most of the time is not helpful in the lesional characterization. It can be small, can be large, not that much of importance. The plain X-ray usually results in underestimation of the size of the tumor, while CT and MRI it's helpful in a pretreatment staging. So regarding the diagnosis, the size of the lesion is not of that importance, but maybe it's impo more important for the staging of the tumor, the extent of the tumor, from where to where, how much to compare it and pre in the following uh, investigations. Is it enlarging? Is it smaller? Is it stable disease? But not for the diagnosis of the lesion, okay? Like we said last week, margins of the tumor are very important. It will help us to define the biological activity of the tumor. Is it slowly growing, rapidly growing, or extra rapidly, more rapidly growing lesion? How is that? First, you should notice if there is a sclerotic rim, means narrow zone of transition means a slowly growing tumor with enough time for bone removal and lay down a new bone. Narrow zone of transition, like we said last week. If there is no sclerotic rim, 
The well-defined margins means rapidly growing destructive tumor for with well, enough time for only bone removal. It's rapidly growing. No time for a new bone, a new bone. Just uh, best, uh, yani best destruction. Okay. If there is ill-defined margin, it's very rapidly growing. There is no time for bone removal or bone layout. It's just infiltrating. Okay. So the boundaries between the normal and abnormal bones are missed. Okay. Like, for example, in this diagram, you can see this is a enough time for bone removal and new bone formation. This is faster growing tumor, and this is rapid growing tumor. Enough time for bone removal, no time for bone layout. Okay? While here there's a wide zone of transition. No time for bone removal, no time for bone for new bone formation. It's just infiltrating, not a very well defined margin. The matrix of the tumor, again, as we said, bone matrix produced by either osteoblasts or chondroblasts. Osteoblast forms osteo, forms bone. Chondroblast form chondro, forms cartilage. Okay? And the cartilage might undergo ossification as in uh, cartilaginous bones, uh, flat bones. So, the bone tumor produces matrix in greater quantity and does not ossify properly. They produce bone. Large amount, but no, not a proper uh, ossification. The tumor matrix determines what kind of tumor is this. Is it a cartilaginous producing tumor, like chondroblastoma, chondrosarcoma, chondroma, chondromyxoid fibroma? All of them is chondro, 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 because it forms chondro, forms cartilage. Okay? Whether it's a bone producing a tumor, like osteosarcoma, osteoblastoma, osteosteoma, things like that. Okay? Uh, matrix of the bone can be either chondroid or osteoid. Chondroid matrix, as we said, it's either punctate calcification, swelled calcification, popcorn calcification, characteristic type of calcification for uh, cartilaginous forming tumor. While osseous matrix forms bone, it's dense confluent bone, cloud-like, like, like uh, fluffy-like, okay? Some tumors have Little or no ossification, like fibrous dysplasia, fibrosarcoma, malignant fibrous osteosarcoma, and solitary bone cyst. Solitary bone cyst usually doesn't have any bone formation. You might find some fallen fragment sign when there is a pathological fracture, but there is no new bone formation or cartilaginous formation. Periosteal reaction, we said there are some patterns of periosteal reaction that we should talk about. We should look for it. Either it's uh, the first, the periosteum is a membrane of several cell layers that's attached to the surface of the bone. It does not cover the areas that is covered with cartilage. The particular surface that covers with cartilage does not have a periosteum. So, any stimulation to the periosteum will result in bone formation, like trauma, tumor, or infection. Okay? The pattern of periosteal reaction will be either benign or aggressive. An aggressive, uh, aggressive uh, periosteal reaction means either malignant tumor or infection. So it's not that easy to differentiate periosteal reaction due to malignant process or due to infectious process, like osteomyelitis, for example. So if there is slowly growing the tumor, it will result in hard, solid, continuous periosteal reaction, one layer, okay? Like, for example, in slow or low... Uh, Infection of low uh, virulence. Um, osteodosteoma, xenophilic uh, uh, granuloma, hyperatrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy, and DVT, they produce solid periosteal reaction, but it's wavy. Yani, uh, undulating surface. It's wavy, but solid, benign type. Okay, in, in these two conditions, DVT, the lower limbs, and in hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. Regarding rapidly and steadily growing tumor, they will have an encrypted pattern, onion peel appearance. The most famous examples are aerobic sarcoma and osteosarcoma, and regarding the infections, osteomyelitis. These three types, will, we might see periosteal reaction in onion peel type. Also, if it's rapidly growing, uh, rapidly, steadily growing the process, okay, rapid but steady, not interrupted. It's not passing in areas of uh, durations of growth, arrest, growth, arrest, growth, arrest, 
This will result in onion peel. If it is graft, 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 will result in what's called sunburst appearance. Sunburst appearance, that is, there are something called Sharpie's fibers, that which are fibers connecting the bone to the periosteum. These fibers will stretch and become more prominent, resulting in what we call sunburst appearance. You can see it here. I don't know if it's obvious on the uh, data show. You can see there is sunburst appearance here due to Sharpie's fibers. Okay. Uh, again, like we said previously, uh, Codman's triangle in rapidly, uh, uh, rapidly growing processes, you look for uh, a triangle at the edge of the periosteal reaction. We call it Codman's triangle, indicating a rapidly growing aggressive type of bone tumor like osteomyelitis and osteosarcoma. And it, it means that only the edge of the raised periosteum is ossified, forming a triangle. Okay? So, that is a very rapid and short view of the uh, bone tumors, what to look for. Now, we can, I think, 